And hello and welcome to Orion Today. I'm your host, Joe Johnson. And once again, I am joined by Michael Dwyer. Welcome, Michael. Well, uh, it's nice to be here again. Good to see you, Joe. And you're wearing orange. It's perfect. I'm in the uh, the fall spirit. I got my uh, sneakers, my Converse uh, Halloween sneakers I bust out every October. Do you get into this whole Halloween spirit thing? Well, I used to a little bit more when I was younger, right? Costumes and all that. Right now, I love passing out candy for Halloween. Yeah. And I'm, I pass out the big king size, Ooh, and I tell popular. them to take two or three of them. <laughs> it's, a, it's a few bucks more, and th you know, they, they're surprised. They're yeah. like, really? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, take, take a couple. I mean, it's once a year. Yeah, yeah. Right, and I'd rather give out the, the, the treats than get any tricks. They'll remember you. I, you know, I remember when I was young, I grew up in Hamtramck, and when I was too old to go trick-or-treating, I started decorating the house and giving out candy every year. And, and I remember I was, one summer I was mowing the lawn and a little kid was walking by and he, he waves me over and I stopped the lawnmower and he goes, are you giving out candy again this year for Halloween? This was like in the middle of summer. I said, oh yeah, yeah, we'll be giving out candy. <laughs> so I, I love this time of the year. I, you know, I get into the spooky movies and all that stuff. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And there's a lot of fun stuff that's going to be happening in the community over the next couple of weeks that we're going to be talking about in a little bit. Yeah, it's really exciting. Lots to do, um, lots for families and even people that don't have kids, you can get into the spirit. Yeah, yeah. Well, did you do anything fun this past weekend? Um, boy, I don't remember what I did this weekend. <laughs> it, it was busy. Uh, so one thing is I'm planning for my, my writer's conference, which is in uh, 11 days from now, and so mm -hmm. a lot of work on that. Where does that take place? That's at Oakland University. Oh, wow. um, uh, so it's Saturday, October 19th. Uh, our keynote speaker is Bonnie Jo Campbell, a, a Michigan author, and we've mm -hmm. got a dozen presentations for writers of all levels, fiction, wow. nonfiction, beginners, people that are published, uh, whether you want to do a traditional publishing path or you want to self-publish, we've got it covered. Wow, where does someone register for something like that? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> RochesterWriters.com. RochesterWriters.com. That's awesome. And so they're still taking uh, registrations? Uh, yep, yep. We're taking them right up until the day of. And um, it, it prices go up as you get closer, so the sooner you do it, the better. I think that's the same group we used to have here in the studio. We would have some writers come in and read poetry and stuff like that. Maybe you need to revive that program here at ONTV. Poetry, yeah. Spoken word in front of the TV. Always exactly. good. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot of fun. So, yeah, we have some exciting stuff coming up here at ONTV. Uh, next week, we kick off our uh, film festival. Yes. Uh, really looking forward to that. For people who want to be part of that, if you're a novice filmmaker, we have a boot camp on Tuesday here at the studio. It's a free boot camp on how to t turn around a short film uh, quickly because when we kick off our film festival on Thursday of next week, um, you basically will have four days to put together a short film, not to exceed 10 minutes. Uh, then the following week, Tuesday is the deadline, the following week we'll have a panel of judges right here in the studio and they'll look at all of the films. We're hoping to get 10 or more films and then we will show all of the films at the Oxford 7 in downtown Oxford and hand out cash prizes and stuff like that. So I look forward to it. I participated once before yeah. and I love coming to the film festival and just watching all the films that people put together. It's great to see this, this local talent on the big screen uh, and if you miss it or if you want to watch it again, it's going to be available online, right? Yeah, we'll put all the short films on YouTube. And, you know, I know some people, some of the teams are motivated by the cash prizes. But for me personally, I think the biggest thrill is seeing your work on a movie screen. That's always such a huge thrill. Well, my biggest thrill when I did mine is, is you made the comment that people laughed when they were supposed to. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what I wanted. I wrote in funny things and you don't know if it's going to work. <laughs> and it did, and that, that, that made me happy. Yeah, sitting in a theater with maybe 100 people all laughing and reacting to something you put together, that's pretty awesome. It is. Yeah. So uh, one of the things that uh, we've done recently, well, high school football season is in full swing, and uh, Lake Orion Dragons really started out strong right out of the gate. Then they stumbled a little bit. They lost to Oxford. Uh, they came back home and went up against Adams, which we recorded in its entirety. Uh, this past Friday, they faced West Bloomfield, uh, where they, they got another loss, but 
both teams combined, I think, scored 80 or 90 points. I mean, wow. it was a lot of scoring for a high school game. They were game. tired. Yeah, so that was on the road, so we weren't there for that. Um, but I did put together a highlights package from the Adams game. That's always a really great rivalry that goes back a long time. So let's take a look at highlights from uh, the Lake Orion Dragons game against uh, Rochester Adams. On the evening of Friday, September 27th, the three and one Dragons hosted the four and zero Rochester Adams Highlanders at Dragon Stadium. Lake Orion was hoping to bounce back from a heartbreaking loss to their crosstown rivals, the Oxford Wildcats, the previous week. To begin the game, the Dragons kick off to the Highlanders, and number 26 Matt Totner fields the kick and tries to make something happen. He fumbles the ball, and the Dragons fall on it on the 20-yard line. Senior T.R. Hill returned as quarterback after suffering a shoulder injury in the game against Troy two weeks earlier. On first and goal from the two, Hill is under center. He hands off the junior Jaden Barrero who goes in for the score. The Will Hoffman PAT was good and the Dragons take a 7-0 lead early in the game. On the ensuing drive, the Highlanders are moving the ball. On second and one on Lake Orion's 32, quarterback Rylan Waters is in shotgun. He chucks the ball downfield and Lachlan Tillotson makes an incredible catch at the five yard line. With Waters and shotgun, he runs the option and pitches it out to Mateo Humbert who gets nailed on the one yard line. Two plays later, Waters takes the snap, keeps it and goes in for the score. The point after was good and things are tied up at seven with 539 left in the first. Following an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on the Adams D, the Dragons have first and 10 on the 26th. On second and six, Hill is in shotgun. He takes the snap, fakes the handoff to Vasquez, bounces it to the right, and races to the goal line for the score. The point after was good, and the Dragons regain the lead 14-0 as the first quarter winds down. In the second quarter, the Dragons face a third and eight on the 20. Hill is in shotgun. He connects with Jamari Cooper, who reaches the three-yard line. Two plays later, Hill is under center. He hands off to Jackson Vasquez, who goes in for the TD. The PAT was good, and the Dragons are up 21-7 with eight minutes left in the second quarter. The Highlanders get the ball back and march down the field on first and 10 from the Dragons' 25-yard line. Waters takes the snap and hands off to Humbert, who hits the hole and races to the pylon for the score. The Highlanders pulled to within a TD, 21-14, with 4.34 left in the second. A Seymour 40-yard field goal closes the gap to 21-17 as the half comes to an end. Let's go to the third. Facing a third and seven on the Adams 17, Hill is in shotgun. He drops back to pass and hits the speeding Jamari Cooper in stride for the score. The PAT was good and the Dragons are up 28-17 with 2.34 left in the third. In the fourth quarter, the Highlanders have a fourth and goal. Nolan Ferris is in at QB for the injured Waters. The QB sneak pulls the Highlanders to within five. They decide to go for two to make the three-point game. Ferris takes the snap, rolls right, and dumps it to Humbert, who reaches the end zone. The Highlanders pull to within three, 28-25, with 9.30 left in the game. Adams kicks off the Lake Orion, who begin a drive from their own six-yard line. The Dragons move the ball and eat up the clock. On second and one on their own 40, Hill is under center. He hands off to Jaden Barrero, who goes 15 yards and fumbles the ball. It's recovered by Adams at their own 43. With the game winding down, the Highlanders need a field goal to tie or a touchdown to win. On first and 10 on Lake Orion's 45, Ferris is in shotgun. He takes the snap, drops back, and is sacked by Brandon Nepchuk. He loses the football, but battles Lane Garris and recovers his own fumble on the 40-yard line for a huge loss. On fourth and eight on Lake Orion's 43, Ferris is in shotgun. He rolls right and launches it to Tillotson, who bobbles the catch. He's knocked out of bounds by Austin Kahn, just short of the first down marker. Turnover on down. The Dragons come away with the win in a nail-biter, 28-25, and improve to a 4-1 record. We caught up with Coach Chris Bell after the game. Proud of the guys. I mean, this last week was a rough week. I mean, we really 
you know, the guys are really down after losing to Oxford. You know, we, we didn't feel like we played as well as we should have. And credit to Oxford for making that happen. So and these guys aren't used to losing. I mean, they, they, they've had so much success the last couple of years that it's a, it was new for them, how, how to bounce back. And I was so proud of them. I think getting off to the fast start, getting the turnover on special teams right away and scoring really quick I think was huge. And then it was just kind of back and forth there, who's going to make the last play. So, so proud of our guys. Brandon Nepchuk with a huge sack, putting them behind the sticks. Yes. That was a big difference there, that last drive. So, really, really excited for the kids. The Dragons travel to West Bloomfield to take on the Lakers on October 4th, then return home for their homecoming game against Clarkston on October 11th. From Dragon Stadium, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV Sports. Join us for an evening of Halloween fun at Boo Bash on Friday, October 18th, beginning at 5 p.m. at the Orient Center. Stroll down Trick or Treat Street, play carnival games, take a hay wagon ride to a pumpkin patch, enjoy face painting, crafts, cider and treats, and have an encounter with live bats courtesy of the Leslie Science and Nature Center. Registration is required. Vendors are welcome. For more information, you can call 248-391-0304, extension 3500, or visit orionparks.com. So that's going to be a fun event, Boo Bash, right here at the Orient Center. And uh, as you may have heard at the end of the, the football piece, uh, this is homecoming week at Lake Orion High School. So uh, we kick things off with a parade on Sunday. We'll have some highlights for you in a second. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, and then uh, this week is the Powder Puff football game, the girls' football game, which is always popular. We'll have our they still do crew that. there. They do, and okay. it's a, if you look at our YouTube videos, uh, some of our most popular YouTube videos are our Powder Puff football games that we've recorded. And then, of course, Friday is the now the uh, boys the still game. cheerlead. Uh, I'm not sure if the, the guys are out there cheerleading or not. I'll have to look for that. But, uh, but yeah, but the, the, the big football game on Friday where they crown the king and queen and everything, that's going to be a lot of fun. So our crew, uh, our full crew will be out there on Thursday and Friday for those games. It's a big so. deal for the kids. Yeah, yeah. All right, switching gears a little bit, we have some guests joining us here on set. We have Cynthia Wright and Rob Longo from the Veterans Ministry, and uh, they're here to promote an upcoming event uh, at the uh, Lake Point Community Church uh, in Oxford, uh, where we celebrate our veterans. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Tell us what you have planned for <clears throat> November 9th, is yep. it? Yep, so it'll be Saturday, um, November 9th. It's our fourth annual. Uh, veterans dinner it's free for all the veterans um, we have a beautiful opening ceremony we have a great dinner that's being catered this year and then we have a guest speaker that comes in music and uh, it's just a great time for all the veterans now you had a big summer picnic that I was at and that was yeah. spectacular you had beautiful weather a great turnout uh, look back on that event yeah um, the weather was beautiful. We we're always worried about the weather. It happened to be an awesome day, and um, we just love having our vets coming in and being able to love on them a little bit and give them a good meal, give them some good music. And we have a lot of um, organizations that come that help veterans so they can um, walk through and see what organizations they might be able to get assistance from or help from or direction from to take care of them. Yeah, I've seen the VFW there and yeah. some different uh, like sponsor tents, mm -hmm. vendor tents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you have? Uh, what do you have planned for November 9th? What's what's on the menu? Uh, well, it's going to be uh, this year. It's baked chicken and yeah. Swedish meatballs with noodles and mashed potatoes and grilled mixed vegetables, rolls, salad, and desserts. That's so awesome. it's going to be. And again, it's free. Um, we just ask people to register. So. Um, they can register with the uh, QR code that's on the flyer, or if they want to call our Lake Point Church office, um, they'll take their name and get them registered. That's it just great. gives us an idea how many people are going to be coming, so yeah. that's why we want people to register. So this is for veterans and their families? Right, and uh, they veteran, can bring and one guest. One veteran and one guest. Veteran and one guest. Wife or you know, son, whoever can, can bring mm -hmm. them. So, I mean, last or this year, this summer, we did have our uh, picnic outdoors. Last year, it had rained, so we had to go indoors. But uh, then the sun was <coughs> shining, people started going outside. We usually have a couple old car clubs show up, Model T's and Model A's, and 
and people have an antique or classical mm -hmm. car, they would bring it. So yeah, it was just a beautiful day. To What's the biggest need that veterans have right now? Um, support, um, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Um, back when I was uh, serving from 1968 to 72, when we came home, um, the veterans uh, were kind of frowned upon and people wanted to beat us up. We had Kent State, the shootings going on, and people were burning their draft cards. And so when we came home from the war, we, we had nobody to, to look out after us, to take care of us for all those needs. And we just turned inside each other and just um, a lot of people went to drugs, alcohol, other things, and just sad. But now today, um, with all this desert storm and everything else, the veterans are being recognized again. They're being respected again, and their people are helping them now with PTSD and and other things with food, you know, for their families. And so it's that. great that the attitude has changed. Yes. Um, but the the support and the need is still there for all the things that yeah. that happen when you're serving. Right. You had Agent Orange. I have a lot of friends that are 100% disabled now because of Agent Orange, and mm -hmm. and the government's starting to recognize that, and it goes to a second generation. Mm -hmm. So if you know if I had Agent Orange, it would go to my children and possibly their children. So now mm -hmm. the government is recognizing that and taking care of the vets. Mm -hmm. which is important. Well, that's good. That's good. What what you're doing over there. So what else we, can we expect? We heard the menu. What about the entertainment? I hear there's a there's music and a guest speaker. Yeah. Uh, Pastor Bob will be singing, and then uh, another gentleman, Mitch Mitch Washer, he'll be uh, also singing and stuff. But uh, I just wanted to. Before I opened up, was just thank you for having us here. Mm -hmm. uh, we really appreciate it, and getting the, the word out to the communities and uh, and um, our uh, major Karen Finch Collier, who is unable to be with us today. She has some issues, family issues, with her parents, and they're not feeling well, so she's kind of stepped aside a little bit. But uh, we miss her. She's got a mm -hmm. great heart, a lovely mm -hmm. lady, and and just so willing to serve. And so we can't wait till those are resolved and then she come back and join us. I just want to briefly talk about the speaker that's yes. coming. So we're, we're honored to have Blake Leach. He's a chief operating officer for a wounded uh, a warrior's journey. And um, Blake served in the army and he was injured in Iraq from a roadside bomb and <clears throat> suffered with PSTD and uh, had a lot of issues that he was dealing with and learned how to deal with them and now he works with the warrior's journey to be able to help other veterans in their journey so he's has a is a dynamic speaker and mm -hmm. he's going to be coming to speak uh, to our veterans so we're, we're excited our, that he's coming yeah he came to our church a couple mm -hmm. years ago and spoke to the whole mm -hmm. church and it was very uh, compelling it touched mm -hmm. our hearts and mm -hmm. his journey and what he had gone through with his family and himself and trying to get back on track and I think it's all because of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. coming in him, accepting mm -hmm. him, and um, it was just awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, when we hear that this event is free to veterans, people got to be watching this thinking, how is this possible? How are you able to feed these people, uh, making it free to come in? Talk about that. Well, uh, we do some events during the year to raise money. Uh, in April, we have a bowl of, uh, bowl of rama. And we do pretty good with that, and, and uh, X amount of dollars for a, a family or a couple, and it includes pizza and, and pop, mm -hmm. and uh, we sell uh, uh, disciple crosses and, and cookies and cakes and all that kind of stuff, and it's all through donations. Mm -hmm. and so it's, uh, there's a Lake Point uh, Community Church website. Can people go there to make donations if they want to support the cause? How can someone donate to the cause? I would call the office. Call the yeah. office. <laughs> <laughs> we sure. have a website yeah. and things of that. So yeah. I think if the office can, if for certain questions, they could direct you in to mm -hmm. the right place mm -hmm. and whatever you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we would love to have donations. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and then people donate. We have uh, go around in the community and they donate food or uh, uh, baskets, you know, to, for prizes and and um, also money and. Yeah. So that That's great. Now you touched on it a little bit, but talk about why it's important to do this. You know, it's 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 a meal. You know, one day, but why do you do it? Why why do you think that the veterans appreciate this? You know, 
it's more than just a meal. Mm -hmm. It's getting together, it's camaraderie. Uh, a friend of mine was an Army vet during the Vietnam era, and the first year that he came, he was sitting at a table, and all of a sudden, this guy walks in with his wife and sits down. Fred, my buddy Fred, went to school with this guy, and they joined the service mm -hmm. together, and he hadn't seen him in 40 some odd, almost 50 mm -hmm. years. So you never know what God has to offer. There. You just show up and, and uh, just to enjoy one another and, and the brotherhood of, of serving. And, you know, so a lot of stories and mm -hmm. a lot of memories and... Camaraderie. Com yeah, definitely. So how many veterans do you expect? Was it? Well, we, we're ho we usually have around 250 to 260. That mm -hmm. includes all our volunteers. We usually have about 60 volunteers at least. Um, so 180, yeah. 190 and veterans. What's, what's the breakdown of that dem demographic as far as what, what wars did they serve in? What was your biggest chunk of people right um, now? Mostly the Vietnam era mm -hmm. and uh, Desert Storm and like that. But mm -hmm. we, I have some friends. Uh, I'm, a buddy of mine had just passed. He was almost 100 years old. So he mm -hmm. served, you know, on Omaha Beach. He landed on Omaha Beach. He was in the in the Navy there. And um, so anywhere in the 90s, there's a lot of Korean veterans mm -hmm. and Korean. Um, uh, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. there's people in their mid-90s that are still showing up. and. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we forget sometimes as a, as a community of, of all the different wars that we've been involved in and you know, we think of the big ones, Vietnam and, yeah. and World War One and Two, of course. And Korea. You know, th those are, yeah, and then, then Korea was the 50s and of course Desert Storm and there's other conflicts that people are involved in that they get sent home and they're, they're still veterans, mm -hmm. yes. right? You still serve yes, your veteran. Mm -hmm. Yes, they, uh, they, they said I do. They mm -hmm. raise their hand <laughs> to defend the the Constitution of the United yeah. States, and and that's v very important. It is a commitment. Mm -hmm. You leave your family, your uh, the loved ones that are home. Um, they don't know whether you're going to return home or whatever. So, you know, we we pray for them, for the veterans as well as the families, to give them peace and knowing that their loved ones will come back home after yeah. after mm -hmm. the war. So now we have here in Lake Orion. We have the VFW. We have the American Legion. Yeah. Um, they provide that support and a, a place for veterans to get together and share their experiences. Um, one issue that I know the VFW is facing is uh, their members are basically aging up, and we've lost a few of them over the past year. I've known a few of them personally. Um, I wonder what we can do to get some of the people who served in some of the more recent wars to take advantage of what these organizations are offering. I think this, mm -hmm. this venue right here, just putting the word out to the community. Um, when we travel um, around the community, go to the grocery store or drug store, um, we're, we're always looking for someone that's wearing a hat, <laughs> a veteran's hat, <laughs> right? Yeah. In the war they <laughs> served, and so that kind of opens up a dialogue <laughs> and, and to talk to them and tell them about our uh, summer picnic and tell them about our appreciation dinner. And, and in turn, they could tell their friends or family and we, we get pass out cards and flyers and just to reach as many people as we can. And especially the younger people, <laughs> um, they're not as showing up in, as like we are, the, the older generation. And we're we're moving on, so uh, we want to bring them in and have them be a part of this, so we could pass that baton mm -hmm. back yeah. to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Cynthia, you and I have crossed paths numerous times, and about a year ago, uh, you were the spe uh, featured speaker at the uh, Patriots Day ceremony at the Veterans Memorial, and you got up there and shared an experience that you had on 9/11, 2001 that made my jaw hang open. Do you want to touch on that a little bit? Yeah, I was, <clears throat> was uh, blessed to be part of the White House Medical Unit. I was a nurse in the Air Force. And um, so on that particular day, I was on Air Force One and down in Florida. And so, yeah, it was, I was looking forward to getting home early and, ha and having, a, having kind of a relaxing day. But um, things changed and it was an incredible day, a incredible week, month, months, years after that, uh, the effects of 9-11. But I was with President Bush uh, on the plane with a pretty small crew of people flying from one place to another, trying to get communications um, hooked up and just keep the president safe. But 
That's this amazing to be a part of history. Yeah. Most of us yeah. sat on our couches that day and watched the events yeah. unfold on television. You were part of history that yeah. day. That's, yeah, really that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I'm, on that. One thing you touched on specifically during your, your speech was that uh, everybody was suspicious of everybody that mm -hmm. day. Do you remember what that was like? I, I do. Um, yeah, it was just surreal, really. Um, you know, there were rumors that the Air Force One was the next target in the terrorist, and so that certainly heightened the alert of all our security on the plane. And so they actually posted uh, guards at the base of the plane where it goes up to the pilot and the communication system, but, and the whole plane was researched, searched again for yeah. weapons. And so, yeah, it was pretty, kind of movie-ish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, kind of surreal, but. That's one thing yeah. I've learned living here in yeah. Lake Orion is, you know, you kind of get to know people who live right here in the community and then you find out they have such an amazing story to tell and it's mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, yeah. I would have never guessed that. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Any final thoughts on the uh, upcoming uh, dinner that you want to share? No, we, we just hope um, people know about it, that they hopefully find it easy to sign up and, and come and enjoy the day. Yeah, we we want to love on them, take care of them for a, for an evening, and they'll they'll remember that day. Um, and we keep getting some people back every year, and they're looking forward to it. Same thing mm -hmm. like the summer picnic. Yeah, like they've been there for we've been doing this for 15 years, and people are still coming and remembering back then, and just an enjoyable time, just getting together. And they bring their families and children, and so it's a pretty awesome event. Yeah. Now that falls on the 9th. Veterans Day is on November 11th. Yeah, they usually funny. have a little ceremony here at the Orient Center. I haven't heard anything yet, but usually they have it in the banquet room there. Mm -hmm. So I'll have to look into that and mm -hmm. see if they're going to be doing that again. But mm -hmm. thanks for coming out and thanks for all you do in the community and, and for veterans. Yeah, well, thank, thank you, you for, for having us. For having us. Yeah, God bless you guys. It. Yeah. And your, your TV station and what you do for the community. Oh, we're happy. I mean, that's what we Appreciate offer is to help get the word out. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thanks for being here. Thank you. All right. You. So we mentioned a moment ago that uh, this uh, homecoming week kicked off this past Sunday with the parade. And uh, myself and a couple of students were out there shooting the parade. You can see that on YouTube and uh, airing on our channel here locally. Uh, here's a little clip of the homecoming court as they went past Flint and Broadway in downtown Lake Orion. Our first couple and or team is Evelyn Taylor and Gabe Scott. Evie's a member of the varsity soccer team, as well as a member of the executive board in the leadership class. Gabe is a member of our varsity basketball team. Give a warm welcome to Evie Taylor and Gabe Scott. Our next pair is Parker Gannon and Allison O'Rourke. Allie is a member of the leadership class, as well as a varsity volleyball player. Parker's a member of our Dragon Broadcasting team, as well as a varsity lacrosse player. Give it up for Parker and Allie. Next up is Maggie Bailey and Annalise Alexo. Everyone, a warm round of applause for Annalise and Maggie. And Mia? Mia and Annalise. Warm round of applause for me and Annalise. Annalise! And Hudson, no, Anderson. Anderson Wade, your brother was Hudson. Well, I'm wearing a applause for the next two team here. We have Mia and Anderson. Annalise and Anderson. Blame this on Landon, you guys. Jack Verlinden, our last member of the Hoko Court. Jack's a varsity soccer player as well as a member of the leadership class. Hi, Becky. And our final entry today is the Police Humvee. Give a warm round of applause for the Lake Orion Humvee, everybody. Just want to remind everybody, today's parade is indeed put together all by students. The students from the leadership class and their team do all the work and effort putting this together today. So if you get a chance to shout out the kids on the leadership class, make sure you do so. Everything's student-run and student-led, so we give a warm shout-out to the Lake Orion leadership team. Thanks for coming today. Mother Nature loves the dragons. 
Lake Orion DDA invites families to take part in the Halloween extravaganza on Wednesday, October 16th. Things will kick off with the return of the Halloween Kids Parade. Participants are asked to gather at Village Hall at 5.30, and then at 6 p.m. the parade will travel along Anderson Street all the way to Children's Park. There will be music and activities in Children's Park, and kids will receive a trick-or-treat trail map that will guide you to businesses handing out goodies and other fun stops along the way. And best of all, the event is free to the public. Mark your calendar. The Halloween extravaganza takes place on Wednesday, October 16th. Wear a costume and bring a camera for plenty of photo ops. For more information, visit downtownlakeorion.org. And that's a perfect segue to introduce our guests here now joining us. We have Matt Gibb and Janet Bloom of the uh, Lake Orion DDA. Welcome to the set. Thanks. Thank you. You're no stranger to this place. You've been here before. Um, the promo we just saw was for the Halloween extravaganza. It's right around the corner. I'm looking forward to it as always. What can we expect on Wednesday the 16th? Yes. So uh, it runs from 5 to 8 that evening. And we are bringing back the parade. So uh, we've got a lot of great comments. Um, used to have the parade, and then when COVID hit, we had to stop that activity. So we are very happy to bring it back. Um, we are going to run it down Anderson Street. So we're going to have everybody meet by Village Hall, right at the corner of um, Anderson and Church. And we're going to go down Anderson to Children's Park. We'll have lots of kids activities, cider and donuts, and different activities going on. And um, then we'll have a trick or treat trail map. So we want to get parents and kids to our different downtown businesses. So. Um, there'll be lots for the kids and families to do. Now brace yourself because <laughs> we have some video of uh, the last uh, parade in 2019 and conservatively there might have been a thousand kids in downtown Lake Orion. Are you ready for that kind of turnout? <laughs> Bring it on. We'll take it. Uh, <laughs> the more the merrier. So um, again it's just a testament to people enjoy this type of activity so we are very thankful to be able to bring it back. That is so awesome. I'm looking forward to it because it's such a great visual of seeing all these kids uh, marching through the village and, and scattered throughout downtown Lake Orion. It's just r really something to see and kind of captures the spirit of the uh, this season. Uh, so what's going to be going on in Children's Park? Yeah, so we're going to have photo opportunities. We're going to have Halloween style music. Um, more tricks and treats will be in, in store. Um, we have some kids entertainment that uh, once they get down there, well, they'll see what we've got in store for them. <laughs> there, there is a surprise that we won't give full right. about, but uh, we hear that an actual Halloween dragon is showing up. Mm. Um, uh, that's quite quite cool actually. <laughs> <laughs> and if I remember correctly there's usually a DJ in the gazebo playing some you know the monster match. There you go like there That's you go we'll have music going and um, yeah just again another great way to and what's unique about Children's Park right so you have the gazebo you have the playground and green space to to be able to enjoy and then obviously making your way through downtown it'll just be a great evening. Yeah. We're, we're, we're fortunate, Joe. So Janet joined us this year. Um, she's no stranger to DDA work and to building downtowns in Northville and Farmington and other places. And if you came to the movie night last Friday, you got a sense oh. of how cool she makes it. With uh, We had uh, Garfield was there uh, in life-size form. <laughs> and, uh, and it was just a lot of fun. So we're expecting the same type of vibrancy. And, you know, we'll ask for a little bit of nice weather again. That'd be great. <laughs> You've had some really neat events. Uh, we were talking just before the show. Talk okay. about the cemetery tour that you just hosted. Well, you know, uh, history is near and dear to my heart, that's for sure. Uh, and uh, we partner with the Orange Historical Society. It's the second year of doing the tour. Um, John Bry, who runs the Main Street program in Oakland County, we've been accredited again uh, for our 17th consecutive year as a nationally accredited program. Uh, which we're pretty proud of, right? Right. right. Uh, so John usually leads it, but John had some difficulty in his in his personal life. So um, uh, and so the historic society stepped in, and so we highlighted uh, four families, four legacy families. There's probably a hundred. I think you talk about it constantly. That yeah, yeah. The amount of history we have in this mm -hmm. town, um, and it was a beautiful day, really, to learn about history. And um, as an example, the Predmore family. Um, I had no idea some of the things that they had done, that, that he was actually at the White House when Lincoln was shot and was mm -hmm. part of the crew 
uh, that uh, that took on that situation in the emergency of President Lincoln being shot that night, mm -hmm. um, and it's one of our legacy families. I mean, it's just all of that history combined. So it was a really nice day for everyone. Yeah, I know when uh, I, I was at the cemetery a few years ago and learned a little bit about uh, Blanche Sims, mm -hmm. who the elementary school is named after, and she's buried in that cemetery. and. Uh, she is, a, uh, they, I believe they call her the daughter of the American Revolution, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so they had yeah. a little ceremony mm -hmm. where they added a symbol to her gravestone or something like that. And I believe her, her house, you know where the uh, Spresser Ogden house is? Mm -hmm. I believe Blaine Sims lived in the house directly across the street from that. So, uh, so she's one of our most famous Lake Orion residents. Uh, everyone knew and loved uh, Blaine Sims. As a matter of fact, kind of a neat little story. When we were at the cemetery shooting video, a pickup truck rolled up and an older gentleman got out and he was like, what are you guys doing? And we said, oh, we're shooting video in the cemetery. And he had never seen the inside of the mausoleum that's there, so right. we had it open, so he poked his head in there. And he said, uh, which graves are you highlighting? And we mentioned Blanche Sims, and he said, she was my teacher. And, we, and so I swung the camera around and said, tell us about that. And so it was amazing that while we were in the cemetery and we were talking about Blanche Sims, one of his former students just happened to walk up on us. That was pretty amazing. Nice. Yeah, so. it, it, pretty neat. So, you know, the downtown is full of the history. Mm. I mean, we still have some of our buildings have the bowling alley in the basement and caskets in the rafters for the <laughs> Halloween time. Uh, uh, and it's really interesting. So look for more to come, Joe, on that. Yeah. You know, we really want to expand, but the expansion for us is really expanding the historical society and those community members that really know who we are and can tell that story better. So our job is to give them the, the fuel and the kindling wood and, and let them run with it. And uh, uh, that's what we're hoping for years to come. You know what I'd like to see the return of is uh, the historical society used to have like a heritage days mm -hmm. and uh, they would get some of the residents in the village to open their homes up for tours and stuff mm -hmm. and it was a real celebration of Lake Orion history and with events and activities going on downtown and maybe, I'm going to put you on the spot here, <laughs> maybe when that uh, lumber yard uh, gets closer to completion and the plans that you have for it, maybe that can be the the focus of a lot of these events? Well, I'll, I'll jump the gun and then I'll be quiet and let the all-star here <laughs> talk about uh, some of the cool programming and events that we got coming because we've got some really cool things that are coming up in the next few weeks. But, you know, the Lumber Yards Project, uh, we thank you again for doing the initial video of what's it look like now. That went We're getting, really well. Yeah, a lot of people have really watched it and commented on it. Um, uh, you know, since that video, we, we uh, have working with local friends and contractors that uh, have removed 21 um, semi-trailer loads, 40-yard trailer loads was just debris, oh, wow. just garbage, but not from inside any of the buildings. That's just what's <laughs> laying in between. And so uh, we're getting closer to having the, the site really ready to more vision plan. Mm -hmm. uh, we did get a big grant. I think a lot oh, of people wow. don't realize that, that uh, we were able to secure $595,000 to go towards wow. historic preservation of the main barn. And so again, picture as we did on that video, you know, our, con our gazebo series for concerts, which was so successful this year, continues, yeah. but we also kind of put that on steroids a little bit and we go in, sorry, into the barn and we have old movies and we have a heritage festival or we have those types of things. And so we're, we're getting closer, Joe, um, you know, stay tuned. We're trying to enhance our website so you'll see plans and you'll see reports and grant information and things there. So if you're curious, just check out downtownlakeorion.org. You can find all that info. That's awesome. Yeah, I had mentioned to someone that uh, there was talk of maybe making the barn like a, a concert venue. And they said, oh, is that going to compete with 20 Front Street? And I said, no. As a matter of fact, 20 Front Street books these, the, the talent yeah. for these events, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're working closely with uh, Alan and Kevin and his team there. You know, it's such a great venue. Um, they've had some talent in recently that we don't deserve as a community. <laughs> I mean, we really don't. I mean, they're coming they're, in from yeah. Nashville and other yeah. places, and we get the beneficiary mm -hmm. of that. Janet did a Absolutely. phenomenal job of working with Kevin to build the gazebo series. The idea of the, of the lumber yard at Paint Creek is that we would enhance that. So 20 Front has already risen their hand and volunteered, hint, hint, uh, <laughs> that uh, how do we make it even bigger and better? So you can picture us becoming even more of a music town where we have 20 Front 
with its intimate listening venue. You have our outdoor mm -hmm. series of concerts at the gazebo. We also have the Flint Street Alley that could have a busker. We could have different things. And then if you open up the barn in a year or so from now when we get to that stage, and now we can put a thousand people inside a, a 110 year old barn. It's pretty cool, pretty cool yeah. vision. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves, but do you imagine the Halloween extravaganza being expanded into the, the lumber yard? Yeah, I think it just gives us an, an additional venue, right? Yeah. To be able to add additional activities to the events. Um, uh, it's been great as far as, even though we haven't, um, you know, been able to get people uh, as far as within the barn areas, but to even have the temporary event parking that we've been able to do for some of our larger events this yeah. past summer. Um, but absolutely, I think it allows us to really think out of the box and and um, uh, just really have some interesting things that we could do that ties in with our downtown still. So um, yeah, excited to see what we can pull together for all that coming I, up. I keep thinking that while well, Janet could scare people in the barn, but she's too nice. She can never <laughs> scare, she can never scare <laughs> we'll leave you. Leave that to her, man. They put this ugly mug in the rafters and be like, it's a haunted barn. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like fun. That sounds <laughs> awesome. Now, I, I think we talked about this recently. I know you are, you guys aren't going to be a major part of this, but are you going to be supporting the upcoming Witches' Night? I know Oxford does an annual Witches' Night. Yeah. What will Lake Orion's role be in that? Yeah, so we have partnered together wholeheartedly with Oxford again, so it's considered a Stronger Together event. Mm -hmm. um, the hours will be 5 to 10. The trolley will be running the, during those times, plus an hour after to get you back to your vehicle, no matter com what community you park in. And um, again, it is a retail evening, so it's a chance for women to get dressed up in all their witches' garb and uh, go store to store. And there'll be different activities and events and um, uh, contests and giveaways and raffles and um, uh, just a lot of great opportunities for people to shop all these different great boutiques and, and shops that we have in downtown. And, and we're grateful. Our business community is pretty good. You know, I mean, they, yeah. they really rally to it. And so Annalise, who's from uh, Boutique Chic, yes. I always get it the other way, Chic Boutique, Boutique Chic, <laughs> great. The, 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 the very beautiful successor store to Simply Marcella yeah. um, there. Um, she's jumped right up and has yes. kind of led the charge a little bit. And Sandra from Epic Realty and others have said, we're in. Mm -hmm. And so we're seeing the businesses really kind of bring you support. So we thought, well, Witches Night is a nice way for us to brand a little bit and get some people down. Well, now it's turning into a big event, which yeah. is oh, really great. wonderful yes. and really, really showcases. But it's going to be led by the businesses. The businesses are working together. Janet's mm -hmm. there with a big push of support to say, you know, what can you do to make it a really fun, uh, pleasant night uh, in the community? And we all know the Witches Night. Sometimes the ge the girls from the lake come out, and it's quite fun, actually. So, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, so uh, Ron Zilka's daughters all dress up, and away yeah. we go. So, you know, it's good. This is Saturday the twentieth. It's that? on actually Friday. It's Friday, a tw uh, October twenty fifth. Oh, the following week. Okay. Yes. Yes. That's exciting. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yes. I know I covered it uh, about two years ago, and seeing the the groups of women, and there were a few warlocks right. there too. <laughs> Thrown um, in the mix. <laughs> but seeing them up and down the sidewalk, just in character, uh, it's a lot of fun. I mean, we recently had the zombie walk, which is a little smaller scale, but that, that witch's night was really something to see. Well, yeah. so you shouldn't say smaller scale because uh, uh, Lloyd Coe from uh, yeah. Ed's Broadway Gifts, who, who really spearheads, that's mm -hmm. a fundraiser. He said, what, 70? Yeah. 70 yeah. participants, which was a huge turnout for them. Yeah. And so the downtown was Possibly flooded with the zombies. biggest yeah. ever. I mean, mm -hmm. I've covered it yeah. for years, and it was an impressive group, yeah. 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 So lots of fun stuff coming up. Uh, I don't, do we want to look ahead to the holidays? What's, what's yeah. planned for the so, holidays? So um, we certainly have, and you may have to double check me on the dates coming <laughs> up, but um, We'll have another daytime uh, lady shopping event coming up November 16th. November 21st will be the sing and stroll. We oh, get a chance awesome. to bring in Mr. and Mrs. Claus. And um, uh, so that's a, another great community event to bring everybody together, sing Christmas carols. Um, you have uh, the horse drawn wagons. Yeah, so we're bringing those. And then we also have the um, turning on the lights to turn on the Christmas lights. So oh. again, just a really great way to that hometown, uh, hometown holiday feel. 
Yeah. So we have that coming up as well. We're, we're recruiting singers, so you two look yes. perfect. <laughs> Mike, I think you carry a tune very well. You, you would be fabulous to lead our, our carols, that's for sure. I can change the station on the radio, <laughs> but I can't sing. Yeah, yeah it's good. It, it's one of the things that's been great for us is that um, uh, even though I've been in the community a long time, as you two know, Janet is, is already a veteran and, <laughs> and an old timer in, in our community. Um, <laughs> but really drawing out volunteers, we're starting to see, yeah. see groups that really want to participate. So the Oakview Cyber Dragons, the, the middle school um, robotics team, mm -hmm. um, they filled our movie night. And so we're looking for some more volunteers. Right. We would love to get a group that loves to sing. We well, if about we have to sing, Joe and I will come to a Halloween event because it will scare <laughs> there you. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, the spooky voice would be <laughs> spot on. Yeah. Uh, it's good, but we do put that call out, Joe. Yeah, that, you know that great. our events are—they're um, just community. So the more community we have, the better. And anybody that might be watching that says, "Oh, well, my my church youth choir or my group at the high school would really love to get more involved," we are all ears and open yeah. arms to all of that. Yeah, you know what's awesome is uh, the last two years I helped Orient Township. Uh, put together videos for this American Bloom uh, YouTube video competition, I guess. And when I put those videos together, I rely heavily on video that I've shot in the vi vi we, we in noticed. village. Yeah, we noticed. In downtown. We noticed. Yeah. The beautiful flowers that you said, Pinknick uh, helps mm -hmm. do the, yeah. the yeah. landscaping, the, uh, yeah, it's, it's just, downtown Lake Orion is absolutely stunning, just stunning. And so I think that plays a big, part of, of why we've won that contest the last two years. Yeah, it, it's, um, you know, the, the DDA over the last couple of years has had a lot of question marks. Um, you know, we're an older DDA. Um, we've done streetscapes and the gazebo in the park and the bridge over the creek. I mean, all of that is a byproduct of the DDA, but at our core is we provide quality of life mm -hmm. more than anything. Janet and I, Sometimes we're, our voice sounds scraggly because we're <laughs> like, okay, well, you know, there's nobody to water the flowers, so today let's just go water mm -hmm. the flowers. Yeah. And then we were carrying corn, they should have had you video, we were all carrying <laughs> corn stalks <laughs> through the downtown. And, <laughs> and uh, you it know, but it, it really is, um, it gives us a sense of community stronger than ever. We had a great chamber luncheon, super happy yeah. TV was supporting that last week, that yep. each of the speakers really had a theme of one thing is that we're Orion. We're like right. one community that really rallies for each other. And if we can water the flowers, mm. that's just our small part. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so that's right. Uh, <laughs> all right, give us the website one last time. Downtownlakeorion.org and certainly right. check us out on our Facebook and um, our Instagram. Awesome, yeah, lots of great stuff coming up. Thanks for coming out as always. Glad Thank to have you. you. Lots of exciting news happening in downtown Lake Orion. Uh, as we've been talking about today, uh, it's the Halloween season, so we want to take you to uh, this little Halloween sketch. We have a lot of Halloween-themed programming that's going to be airing on ON TV throughout this month, and here's a little sample of that. <laughs> We got a Triffid here. What should we give this guy? I'll give you a big hint. I'm a carnivore. You like in a psychus? Not carnival. I'm a carnivore. I eat meat. All right, let's see here. You know what? I think I got just the thing for you. How's about a tasty foot? Ah, uh, you want to make that a matching set? A matching set? Get a load of this guy, will you? No, pal, only one per customer. I'll beat uh, it. Scram. Ugh. Ugh, bread it. Wow, trick or treat, trick or treat. Give me something live to eat. Oh. <laughs> wow, what did you eat? Ah, uh, just a triffid I bumped into. Ah, the cycle of life here in Haunted in Heights. Boy, am I glad I'm already dead, and I don't have to worry about that anymore. So, do you have something to learn about this? Have you ever heard of the legend Bloody Mary? No. Well, Bloody Mary is where you take two candles and you turn the lights out and you look into a mirror and you say Bloody Mary three times. 
and Bloody Mary should appear and kill you. What? Yeah. No. Teddy and I disagree with this. First of all, we both don't want to die, and second of all, we don't have candles, so I disagree. You have one candle. You need two. What? I disagree. How did... This is my phone! I know. How did you... You ready? No! Yeah. Hmm. No! Oh god. Bloody Mary. Stop. Bloody Mary. This is what's happening. Bloody Mary. Stop. Oh my god. Just <laughs> Hey, Boney, look at this. We got a scarecrow. Hey, hold on, pal. I, I think I got just the thing for you. Ha ha ha. Just what the wizard ordered. Brains! You got a heart and courage in there, too? Just in case the other two nutjobs show up? The Orient Township Fire Department is hosting an open house on Saturday at Fire Station Number 1, located at 93 South Anderson Road. You'll get to tour the station, climb in the trucks, and meet the firefighters. The event runs from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Join the Orient Library on Saturday afternoon for Pizza Palooza. October is National Pizza Month. Stop by for pizza-themed crafts and activities. Pizza and pizza-flavored snacks will be served. The event runs from 2 to 3 o'clock. For more information, visit orientlibrary.org. Registration now open for the Orient Parks and Rec's annual Boo Bash. The bash will be taking place on Friday, October 18th at the Orient Center. Three time slots are available for an evening of Halloween fun. Space is limited, so sign up today at OrientParks.com. The AU Special Needs Foundation is hosting a trunk or treat on Saturday, October 19th. The event will take place at Friendship Park from 6 to 8 p.m. For more information, you can visit AUSNF.org. Sign up today for ON TV's Wildwood Film Festival. The festival kicks off on Thursday, October 17th at the studio. Movies will be shown on the big screen at the Oxford 7th Theater on Wednesday, October 23rd. For more information and registration, visit orientontv.org. Well, it looks like our beautiful fall weather continues. Wednesday's forecast is calling for clear skies with a high of 64, low of 38. Clear again on Thursday with a high of 63 and low of 43. Partly cloudy on Friday with a high of 77 and low of 51. Evening showers on Saturday with a high of 65 and low of 46 and partly cloudy on Sunday with high of 64 and low of 40. Well, that's it for this week's Owen TV Quick Hit. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. So much going on in the community. It uh, keeps me busy. Yeah, well, it's the holiday season, right? It kicks off everything, and, and Halloween, we've talked about it before, is, is second only to Christmas stuff, and they yeah. just blend right in there. Uh, yeah, I'm already seeing some amazing decorations in the community, people going all out with like pirate ships and skeletons and you've seen those 10 12 foot skeletons are all over the place people are really getting into it yeah they're everywhere i've got maybe one or two on my street yeah and the the, the biggest house with the most uh, most stuff they're brand new neighbors so last year they moved in <laughs> like the end of september and they set ev everything up wow and they're pr practically the only house <laughs> but, uh, now i see other people jumping on and they've got a few different things so maybe they've started something yeah yeah they're like hey we gotta we gotta keep up with the joneses i think uh in the quick hits uh we saw a little mention of the uh fire station open house uh that is tied into fire prevention week fire prevention month in october and so the fire station that's in downtown Lake Orion over by Children's Park, uh, they'll open that up to the community. There's food and cider and games and kids get to operate the fire hose. Uh, so that's a really big Are uh, there real funding. fires they get to put out? <laughs> or is not little, that interactive? A little, little miniature house they aim the hose at. But uh, that's a really cool event. And I'll be down there for that, uh, shoot video of that every year. But yeah, the whole whole month is fire prevention week. So, uh, or, or the whole month is fire prevention month. And um, it, that might be a good time this month to, you know, check those batteries and the smoke detectors and practice, uh, you know, the escape plan and meet at a local location outside the house like a tree or something like that uh, do all that stuff to keep your family safe so it is one of those things that's really easy to do 
and to refresh your memory once a year, but we just don't. So yeah, yeah make those plans. It only takes five minutes maybe to run through all that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Michael, last night was our last uh, fifth week of our uh, studio video production classes. Uh, what did you think of, uh, I know it was a refresher for you, but yeah, what did you think of the studio classes? It's great. It was great that we had a full crew. So full crew is, we had, I don't know, maybe 12? Ten, ten people, I think, total uh, went through the class, yeah. Yeah, and that, that means there's enough, pos enough people for all the positions of making this happen that you guys yeah. are watching. Uh, and that's a huge benefit to the per person going through the class, that they can rotate the different jobs, they can see how it all works, and they can do a show like this. Yeah. So last night we did uh, our, our final project, our class final project. So we had uh, three segments that we recorded right here. Those will all get edited together for a program that will air on ONTV and we'll upload to YouTube. And now that that class has come to an end, starting this upcoming Monday, uh, is what we call our field production classes, which is our portable cameras. And we talk about how to use those cameras to not only cover community events like I do for the news, um, but we also talk about filmmaking and how to use those cameras to shoot movies and music videos and anything you can you know shoot creatively with a camera we'll cover uh, in those classes. So that runs five weeks every Monday night from 7 to 9 p.m. And after that five weeks comes to an end, uh, then we're going to do three weeks of editing. So if you've ever wanted to be uh, introduced to Adobe Premiere Pro, and there's a relatively new editing software that you can download for free called DaVinci Resolve, and we're going to touch on that as well. So if you want to learn about video production, ONTV is the uh, place to do it. You can register online. It's on the screen, orientontv.org, and we'd love to have you sign up for our classes. They're a lot of fun. It's a blast, and I'm, I'm happy that I stumbled across you guys through another volunteer that said, hey, I think you'd like this, and that's what we do now. We tell people, hey, I think you'll like this, and they do. I mean, you could see the enthusiasm with the crowd last night from finishing that project, yeah. which we get to see live uh, at some point here. Very uh, soon. Probably very soon. by the end of the week I'll have it all And together. thanks, Joe, for, for just kind of overseeing it all. Uh, you're a big help to the program and oh, for, for people getting these classes done. Uh, just to make sure they get out there with a little finishing touch, a little fine tuning, yeah. uh, so that uh, it's viewable. Well, I hope my enthusiasm comes across. Of course, that's how I got into video production uh, 40 years ago, was uh, getting involved with my local public access station in Hamtramck. We're lucky that the public access still exists here in Lake Orion, and uh, we want to encourage you to come in and take advantage of these resources. So. On that note, let's wrap up today's episode of uh, Orion Today, and we'll see you again in two weeks.